Four months ago, a 15-year-old boy with autism up and vanished off the face of this planet. Nobody knows where he's at. There's been over 1,500 people involved in his search and they can't find so much as a footprint. Let's dive into the case of missing boy Sebastian Rogers. I'm gonna start this video right off the bat by telling you guys that this is a very sensitive, very popular missing person case, and I'm gonna do my best to not mess up any of the details, but if I do happen to make a mistake, please don't beat me up in the comments too bad. Let's start this video off by going over the missing person flyer. An Amber Alert has been issued for Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers, age 15, male, white, five foot five, 120 pounds. He went missing February 26th, 2024, in the area of Stafford Court in Hendersonville, Tennessee. So right off the bat, Tennessee is on the map for another missing person. Sebastian was last seen wearing a black sweatshirt, black sweatpants, and glasses. It also says that Sebastian has a medical condition that may impair his ability to return safely without assistance. Like I said at the beginning, Sebastian is autistic and there are many levels of the spectrum and that's about all I know. I, I truly know nothing about autism. So we'll start it right there. So I, I'm not even going to try to talk to you guys about autistic children and how they're raised and how, how, how you're supposed to raise them and deal with them and, and you know, their quirks and all that stuff. I don't know. And I Definitely don't want to offend anybody. I did find this online though from an incident that happened August 11th, 2016, and I wanted to read it to you so you and me are both on the same page. Maybe it makes some sense to you guys a little more than it does me. Now, I'm not sure if this came from some kind of investigation into something that happened in the family, but what it does say is our son suffers from a rare condition called 6Q27, chromosomal deletion syndrome. Among the symptoms he suffers from are incidents of acting out, where he hits and bites himself out of frustration. He has been known to throw himself to the ground during these incidences. Once again, I don't even know anything about that. I just want to read you guys the details of this case. Later on in the video, I will do my rant and tell you what I think, but right now let's just go over the details of this case a little bit further. I also want to add about Sebastian's autism that it says here, Sebastian has high functioning autism, is described by his mother as being very smart and not a mischievous child by any means. So the last time anybody has ever seen Sebastian was February 25th. His parents, mother and stepfather, put him to bed. I'm not sure what mom and the stepdad were doing, but they did say that after they put him to bed, around 10 p.m., they heard a thud. And that was about an hour after he was supposed to already be asleep. She added that she called out to Sebastian to tell him to keep it down. He responded, and then she said, go to sleep. February 26th, the Amber Alert was issued. There is a story posted on News Nation, and I'm going to read a couple clips from me that I found interesting. He said the teen's shoes were still at the front door. His Nintendo Switch was where the teen left it, and his phone was still in the kitchen. Now, I don't know the family, I don't know the kid, but it seems to me they're saying, okay, if he left the house, he was barefoot. And he also didn't take his phone with him. And apparently, you know, he has a Nintendo Switch, he probably likes that toy, maybe he would have took that with him too, but he didn't. So right off the bat, the first thing that pops into my mind is, sometime in the middle of the night, after 10 p.m., he left the house. Did he crawl out the window? Did he leave through the front door? Uh, if he did somehow make it outside, he was barefoot. Let's start right there. So how far can a 15 year old kid with autism make it barefoot with nobody being seeing him and, uh, and he never shows back up again. He just vanishes. The story continues to go that so far there is no evidence of foul play connected to Sebastian's disappearance. Sumter County Sheriff's Deputy Eric Craddock said, though he added that the authorities are not ruling anything out. So here we have the police saying they don't see that there's any criminal activity linked to this case. So I guess their first impressions are he, he left the house at his own free will. He wandered off, got lost and somehow f vanished, f fell off the planet. Are you guys with me when you're thinking to yourself, how how does a 15 year old boy, and I keep saying autistic because it, it could play a part in him going missing. A kid walking around in his pajamas, essentially barefoot in the middle of the night, 15, somebody's gonna see him. 
You would think. I mean, there's security cameras everywhere. There's ring doorbells. Um, there's got to be somebody out on the road, somebody walking their dog, um, cars coming home from a late night at work, um, people, I don't know, just 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 night owls out, out doing nighttime stuff. They didn't see a 15-year-old kid walking down the sidewalk. That right there throws a big red flag for me. That is only my opinion. Once again, I am trying my best to not offend anyone because this is a very open case and it's only been four months. Sounds like a long time, but he could still be alive. That's why I'm doing this video to keep the story alive. You know, we don't want this case to go cold. There are so many high profile people, news people, Nancy Grace, um, Court TV, they're all doing so much work investigating this case on top of so many other people. But like I said, we're doing this video to keep the story alive. Back to some more details about this case. The Independent released some stuff I want to share with you guys too. They said state and local authorities searched for Sebastian for more than a week using helicopters, drones, search and rescue dogs, and teams on foot. So they got helicopters and drones. That's cool. You know, they have infrared technology. Um, granted, that would probably work best like the night he went missing. Because if he did leave that house wandering around, infrared technology, you know, they're gonna pick it up. Especially the police, they got some high-tech FLIR, you know, that night vision stuff that they track down criminals. They could very easily pick out a kid maybe lost in the woods, walking down the street, doing something. But I believe it would be the next morning that he was reported missing. So if he left that house in the middle of the night and he was on foot, how far could he walk and which dire direction did he go? But it looks like the drones and the helicopters did not get any information. Now let's talk about these search and rescue dogs because I did hear a story that one of the canine handlers, the dogs got a hit and it led them to a pond. And at the pond, they, did, they said they did see footprints. At the time, I'm pretty sure all the police and everybody was getting like, I wouldn't say excited, but they were narrowing down their search to that pond because, you know, it looks like his, his body might have been in that pond. But they drained the entire pond and searched it, and nothing was in that pond. So the questions arise, why did the dogs hit on that pond? What was, what happened at that pond that made the dogs go there? Did he wander to that pond and, like, maybe wander through it? and then wandered out the other side? How deep was the pond? Uh, did he walk around it? Was he ever even there? Did the dogs pick up on something else? We don't know, but the, the fact was they drained the pond and they didn't find anything. So that ruled that out, even though why the dogs hit? You know, d dogs, they, they, I mean, they, they do the best they can. I don't know if they were bloodhounds or not, but they were, I think they're canine trackers. That's some of the details that I don't know and I don't really want to speculate on that. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but when we circle back to the autism thing, I heard, and I'm not even sure where I heard this, so tell, tell me by all means if I'm way off. Autistic children, depending on what kind of autism, I've heard that they like to hide. They like to play hide and seek. They like to crawl inside things. Maybe that's just certain kind of autism, or maybe this was Sebastian's case. I've heard that there was a theory that maybe he crawled inside a dumpster or a trash can somewhere, and the trash company came along and scooped up the trash can, dumped it in the truck, went to the landfill, dumped out their load, and uh, went about their day. Uh, there was a very extensive search at the landfill, the local landfill, and they was, you know, there was a lot of people at this landfill and they was digging through all the trash and um, I, I, they didn't find him there either. But now that's, man, I just really hope that that wasn't the case because if he did crawl inside a trash can and was hauled off to the, to the landfill, it would be so hard. I could only imagine to, to try to find a missing person in a landfill. How many trucks go there every day dumping their trash. You know, how long before they, how many days was it before the police started searching at the landfill? You know, how many trucks came and dumped their trash? Because usually at landfills, from what I remember, 
all the trucks, you know, they have a designated spot that they let all the trash dump and they fill it up and, and the tractors will push it, level it out. So all the trucks are going to one location. It's not very spread out at all. So all day, every day, a truck will come in, dump its trash and leave. And another truck will come in, dump its trash. How deep could his body be? Did they dig that deep? You know, how extensive was the search? Once again, these are questions that are just popping out of my head and I'm wanting to spark a conversation with you guys. Definitely don't want to get things wrong. So I'm pretty sure there's going to be a follow-up video on this, but for now, let's continue. Now there's a group out there called the United Cajun Navy and they are a gigantic search and recovery team. You know, they, they have, they have the assets, they have the means, they have the people, they have the funding. This is a great group and they do great things. They got involved in this case. And uh, I want to read to you something that happened to them, which doesn't make any sense to me. And I can't really find any details about it besides what I'm about to read you. On Saturday, March 23rd. Now, this is a whole month after he went missing. But on Saturday, March 23rd, the volunteer organization, United Cajun Navy, announced it was deploying a team to aid in the search for Sebastian. The group said it was working with local officials and urged those interested in the case to be patient when asking for new information. But then it goes on to read, the group later suspended its in-person searches, saying that it had received death threats. Who was threatening them? Where did that come from? This group, a nonprofit, comes in and help, wants to do their best to help bring this child home. They're doing the right thing and their, their lives are being threatened? Who's threatening their life? If anything, I would just love to know the whole story behind that. Because that could, man, that could spin off to a whole nother conversation. But who comes in and starts threatening the lives and gives death threats? to a group that's coming in to help search for this kid. A competition group? I don't even know if that exists. It goes on to read that they've had over 1,500 people helping in the search and have covered around 2,000 square miles, but still not a sign of them at all. Something else I wanna bring up, and I don't have the video in front of me to show you guys, but it's, it's out there if you wanna look it up. There is a ring camera, a security camera that was running uh, the night he went missing. It's it's kind of creating a little bit of um, choosing sides on the internet. The authorities are saying that the video is currently of no evidentiary value. But if you watch the video, you can see, and it's very vague, that there is movement off in the distance on the street from this guy's house that the security camera is running. There are There's one dot that's stationary and there's a garbage truck that they determined that was also stationary. But then all of a sudden you see a light come on and move. And some people are speculating that could be a flashlight. Somebody was out on the road walking with a flashlight. Um, others could say that was just a vehicle off at the distance because you could barely see it. The, it was a night vision on his camera, so you could barely see it pick up. So there's a lot of debate on that one. Was there somebody out on the road with a flashlight? Was that Sebastian with a flashlight? Or was it just a vehicle off in the distance? Maybe even a bug, because some people have also said that a bug might have hit that light at the right time, and that's what caused it. Let me put this Facebook post up on the screen that I found to show you some more details about these mystery lights. By all means, pause it if you want to read the whole thing, but I'm, gonna, I'm just going to scan through it a little bit and show you, like, read some tidbits. Like I said, the authorities said that the video is currently of no evidentiary value. Others close to the case claim that the lights were either floodlights or from a garbage truck. I'm no expert, but those look more like flashlights or cell phone lights to me, but who knows? Now, they said that Sebastian's phone was left at the house, so if it was somebody's smartphone, it wasn't his. In the absence of any new developments, there are those trying to make this video into something it's not. Me, I believe it shows individuals with small lights outside the home. Now I'm learning here as I go, but it says right here, it says, remember Sebastian left with a flashlight. So he didn't leave with his phone, but he did leave with a flashlight. So that very well could be him walking down the street. So there is a Sebastian Rogers Reddit page and it has all kinds of people putting in their two cents. And some of it's kind of interesting. Let me read to you some of the posts that's in there. One person posted that Memphis police said the medical examiner is investigating after a bone was found near a construction site near St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. 
Memphis Police Department responded to the call just after 7 a.m. Tuesday, June 18th. They haven't confirmed if the remains are human, and apparently there was a cemetery there at one time. But what a coincidence that this is the construction site where Chris was working. Now, like I said about that little theory, uh, he was in Memphis working the night that Sebastian went missing. June, they find a bone. But there used to be a cemetery where this construction site is. So that is, that is a stretch if you think about it. Um, it all depends if this bone is even human. It could, it could be a, a deer bone. You know, a lot of people just really don't know the difference. And if it is a human bone, there is an old cemetery. They might've accidentally dug up somebody and that's the bone. But to go as far as thinking that the stepfather had something to do with Sebastian's disappearance is, is a stretch. But on the other hand, the mom and the stepdad were the last people to see him alive and to vanish off the face of the planet with no evidence to show he's anywhere? What does that tell you? I mean, you guys be the judge on that one. Something else to bring up was that if you guys remember the college student Riley Strain that went missing in Nashville and they ended up finding him dead in the river after a night of drinking, he was missing for up close to a couple weeks and there was national attention on this. It, it caught wind and it took all the attention away from Sebastian Rogers. Sebastian Rogers went missing before Riley Strain did and everybody pretty much immediately forgot about this kid until after Riley Strain was found. And then all of a sudden the media shifted to Sebastian Rogers. It really sucks how that works that just, depending on what's going on in the world at that time, all depends on the kind of coverage you get. You know, like here we have a 15 year old autistic child who went missing and right then it should have been priority number one, which I'm sure it was in the town. I'm not, I'm not dissing any of the cops. You know, I'm, I'm sure they did They're they're doing their best. Uh, but then Riley strain pops up and for some reason it just, it went bonkers on the news. Like everybody, social media podcasts, everybody's talking about the missing college kid who left the bar and vanished. And, uh, you know, everybody, eventually they found out that he was in the river and he passed away, uh, after a night of drinking, but it was getting so much attention. Everybody it's, it felt like everybody forgot about Sebastian and, uh, it sucks, but maybe did that put a delay on the amount of resources that could have went into searching for him? If the search started sooner, is there a better chance they could have found him? Were all the resources that were available used to try to find Sebastian or were they being used up searching for Riley? Who's more important? Who gets the priority? Who makes these decisions? These are questions I don't know and I'm just talking out loud to see what you guys think. Another question that popped up on the Reddit feed was have they searched any caves or mine shafts in the area? I've been following the case and the bloodhounds should have picked up on something. That's a great point. Are there any caves or mine shafts in the area? Are there any open manholes? Now I'm sure the authorities have looked into all of that by now. I wouldn't think there are any like hazardous caves or mine shafts because I think this was a pretty upscale neighborhood. Let me pull up a map really quick and show you guys what his neighborhood looked like. So here's the map and you can see the neighborhood where Sebastian lived. They actually show you the exact house, Sebastian's home. It's what a typical neighborhood would look like. There's lots of houses, there's a cul-de-sac. You know, it, it looks pretty tight quarters, so a lot of people lived on this road. Now this map is illustrating where all the water areas are at. Little ponds, the bodies of water, that they've searched everything. Now, realistically, could he have made it to any of these bodies of water? I'm not sure the relevance of the cemetery, but if he wandered down the street, maybe that one body of water right there, closest to his house, is possible. Some of these areas that they're looking at, are far for the middle of the night for a 15 year old who's barefoot. And the fact that the dogs would only hit on this pond and nothing was in the pond and uh, all these other spots were searched. Do we want Sebastian found? Of course we do. Everybody wants this child to come home safe and sound, right? There is a Facebook page made called Finding Sebastian Rogers. And right off the bat, this catches me off guard because you would expect you create a page online. You want everybody and anybody to get involved and come up with ideas and get out there and search. Think outside the box. That's what I do. I want to, I want to get as much info as I can from anybody. Theories, speculation, anything, 
right? It all helps because my mind might be going one way and your mind might be going a completely different way and you might be the right one. And if we didn't listen to you, we would never find missing person, right? Well, the first thing I noticed about this Facebook page is it says no speculation or theories. I don't know the thought process behind that. That's exactly what I'd want. I want people to come in and give me theories. If my, I don't, I don't know. I don't know about that one. You guys tell me. Then if you go down a little bit to the rules, it says speculation, negativity, asking questions about what law enforcement has, is, or will do, or questioning law enforcement is in general, is strictly prohibited in this group. Your comments will get deleted and you will either be suspended or banned from this group. This is not up for discussion. Sebastian coming home safely is the only thing that matters. Be respectful with your words as family members are in this group. If you're reported, you will be suspended. That's bonkers to me. Honestly, I mean, you can you can run your Facebook group however you want it. It's your decision. More power to you. I'd like to say I'm not judging, but that's not how I would do it. Uh, absolutely, I would want as many people as possible to join this group. And I would want them to come in with theories because that's what investigations are. It all starts with a theory. Well, we know he left here. What if he went left? I don't know. What if he went right? You know, there's a dirt road right across the street. What if he went straight ahead? These are all theories. This is part of an investigation. Then you go follow up on the theories and see if the theory pans out. If not, you move on to the next step. That's my thought process. Maybe that's why I'm not a certified detective or, or in law enforcement. But you know what? To each their own. If that's how they want to run that Facebook page, so be it. I just think they're kind of limiting themselves on getting information because there could be somebody out there that's like, hey, I got a pretty good theory. You guys might want to go check this spot out. And they're not even going to know about it because they won't let him theorize. All right, speaking of theories, this is going to be my theory, all right? And do not hate me because I know this is an open case. He is still missing. It's been four months, okay? We all want Sebastian to come home. We want him to come home alive and safe. With that being said, how does a 15 year old kid get up, somehow get out of the house barefoot, didn't take his phone, didn't take his Nintendo Switch, didn't have his shoes on, and vanishes? The parents wake up the next morning to go wake him up, and he's not in his room. And that's it. Period. Where did he go? Where are the footprints? Why didn't the dogs at least track him from the house to a certain destination and then gone? I don't think Sebastian was a runaway. I don't think this was planned. I don't think he wanted to get up and walk out of his house. I don't think any of that. Now, this is me. Once again, hold your fire. I'm just telling you what one man thinks, okay? As horrible as it may sound, I don't think Sebastian left that house on his own. Now, I don't understand how he could have been kidnapped because obviously the police aren't even looking for criminal intent as of right now. I don't, I don't think so. But I also know that there are stories coming out right now that is starting to divide the biological father from the stepfather and mother. And I want you guys to go online and start reading them for yourself. I'll put some links in the description for that one. But there's a little bit of division there because dad is, you know, he's, he's beside himself. He, he, he wants his son back. And mom and stepdad are kind of like splitting apart, so to speak. And I'll give you an example of something I read. Gabby Petito, right, when she went missing, her parents were separated. And when she went missing, her parents came together and, and, and came together, like put their differences aside, put away, they put away everything. And all they wanted to do was we need to find our daughter. And they came together and they were united. I'm quoting, they were a force to be reckoned with. Now, with that being said, everybody has their different ways of, of grieving and, and thinking and their thought process. I don't know these guys. They, they have reasons for what they're doing. But at the same time, you have the mom and stepdad 
were the last people to see him, period. And are, my question is, are they being looked at as a suspect? Are they being looked at a little closer than anything else? You know, I don't know. But my closing argument would be, it has to be more than just Sebastian walked out of this house. That's what I think. I can only pray that if he was taken against his will, I, I pray he's still alive. I pray he comes home. I pray whatever the circumstances are, it wasn't to cause harm to Sebastian, you know? And only time will tell, but four months into this, not a fiber of evidence that they're releasing publicly that says where he went, where he could have gone, which way he went, you know? There's a whole lot of where did he go? So this is just a gigantic mystery and it's still ongoing and it's still incredibly fresh. So get the word out and share this video and start binging Sebastian Rogers on all the social media accounts. Start commenting. Do your own investigating. Now, with that being said, there is a reason why I haven't been to the town to help search for Sebastian. And that's because I heard through a news story early on that a lot of people who do what I do, they run around with cameras and they, they try to, you know, they document everything. That's what we do. We're video makers, we're YouTubers, whatever you want to call it. And a lot of them have been showing up to search for Sebastian with their cameras to try to make videos. And it is starting to become a cluster and people are starting to go places they're not supposed to be. They're starting to mess up the investigation. They're starting to get in the way. They're starting to irritate people. And the moment I heard that, I said, I'm out. I, I want to help, but I don't want to get in the way. I am not a specialist in searching for missing children. All right. I, I have no special skills when it comes to trying to find a child who disappeared in the middle of the night. I would like to say I'm a professional at searching the waters with sonar and scuba diving. I can do that and I would love to help, but it looks like 1500 plus people searching for this child. Divers are a plentiful in this search. They don't need me there to be in the way. What they need me to do, if anything, is to do exactly what I'm doing now and keep the word out that Sebastian is missing. He needs to be found. This kid has his whole future ahead of him, and I pray he gets to come home and continue growing and learning and having a, a great life. But only time will tell, and uh, with your help, with your support, this family can get answers. The community can finally sleep knowing where Sebastian is. So, with that being said, make sure you guys start hitting the internet and stay active and do your own research. See what you can figure out. Together as a community, we might very well be able to figure something out and find out where he went. With that being said, my name is Jeremy. I will see you guys on the next video.